Like season two's survival, the dove hunt is an episode where the main plot is inconsequential. But the events of that main plot causes ripples throughout the cast of characters that lead to consequences later on. It also has one of my favorite Dallas tropes, the mirror character we can all learn a lesson from. Ray and Bobby are exhausted from a morning of cattle rustling, and Bobby laments that Miss Ellie had to run into town for some errand or another, and didn't have time to send a ranch hand with some beer. That errand, we learn, is a breast exam, foreshadowing an arc a few episodes from now. Her doctor says she does have a growth, but he thinks it's probably just a cyst, not a tumor. But he does tell her he'll arrange for a mammogram just to set her mind at ease. JR is upset that the Asian governments are putting the screws to him, especially with all the bribe money he's been spreading around. Kristen comes in and offers a sympathetic ear, but he tells her to tend to her secretarial duties. She does try her best to keep Jacques from walking in on JR's phone call, but he pats her on the head and bursts in anyway. Jacques demands that JR come to lunch with him and blow off work. At the ranch, JR starts one of my favorite bits where he attributes Pam's job to Bobby having money problems. Short of cash, are you? Lucy tells Bobby that her mom and dad have been in touch and might be getting back together. JR tries to poison that well, but Bobby tells him to get lost. Sue Ellen gets a funny line in about wishing that JR adopted her instead of marrying her. I'm touched by your concern with children. I'm just sorry you didn't adopt me instead of marrying me. At dinner, Jock notes that everyone seems on edge. Ellie agrees and tells them the men should all get together and go hunting. JR says he can't spare the weekend, but when Sue Ellen says Jock and Bobby probably need the alone time to talk to one another, he suddenly finds the time. The Shepherd sisters are fantastic at the manipulative barbs. Well, maybe um, Bobby and Jock should go alone. I'm sure they have lots to talk about. Jock invites Ray, much to the chagrin of JR. Bobby reminds him that Jock thinks of Ray as one of the family. Yeah, it's probably a good thing he's getting in the practice now. At the local general store, Ray makes plans to recreate the Blazing Saddles fire scene by asking for some coffee, chili beans, and some bacon and eggs. The general store owner goes cold when he finds out that he's dealing with Ewings. Bobby tells Ray that some folks are just apprehensive around people with money and power. This is Bobby's version of Haters Gonna Hate. As soon as they're gone, the clerk calls some old coot and tells him that Jock is in town. The old coot tells his son he's been waiting 32 years to face off with Jock again. Hmm. I wonder which character this one-off gent could correlate to. The old coot, who we learn is named Tom Owens, storms into the bar where the Ewing boys are tying one on. He demands satisfaction, but Jock doesn't even remember who he is. Don't you know? Know what? I'm Tom Owens. Show oh, you're Tom Owens. This triggers a good old-fashioned coot brawl. <laughs> now them Ewing boys better learn how to throw hands or start buying drinks. <laughs> the Ewings win the fisticuffs, leaving the old man and his boys with their tails between their legs. The boys get the idea to pay a little visit to the Ewings while they're hunting. As they're setting up, Bobby, Ray, and Jock jokingly say that JR should negotiate for oil rights with the Chinese, which hits a little too close to home, so he quickly changes the subject. Ellie is still worried about the mammogram, so worried that she blows off Pamela when Pam asks if anything was wrong. So Ellen lets baby John continue crying because he's got Pam, Ellie, and the nurse to dote on him. Pam again presses Ellie on what's wrong and Ellie lies again, telling her that it's nothing. Back at the hunting ground, someone sabotages the Ewing's lamp, and another person takes a shot at Bobby. They chuck it up to a careless hunter and continue. The lamp explodes, triggering an argument between JR and Ray over whose fault it is. An argument that's pretty pointless because it's clearly Jock's fault for throwing a cigar next to a kerosene lamp. In what is either the early morning or a day for night shot, Jock is awakened by a noise and sees someone fiddling with the truck. When he yells at them, someone shoots him from the trees. JR tries to help and, hey, who shot JR? Ray and Bobby give chase, but the men are gone. That leaves Jock with a mortal gut wound, JR hobbled from a shot to the leg, and no way to get them into town for help. JR actually plays hero, offering to play guard for Jock while Ray and Bobby hike into town. With the other boys gone, Jock takes the opportunity to drop a bomb on JR. He was married before he met Miss Ellie, but his first wife suffered from depression, so he stuck her in a home in Colorado. He's been paying for her hospitalization, but now he wants a trust set up, so she's taken care of after he's gone. I didn't have time to plan a thing. Just keep putting everything off. This plays out in a couple of ways, but the most immediate is that Jock won't have the assets to set up a trust now that South Fork is mortgaged to the Asian oil wells. 
You're going to have to put up South Fork as a security. And if Jock finds that out, JR could be out on his ass. JR promises to take care of it himself, buying some time. Ray and Bobby don't find the law or a doctor, so they steal a truck and hightail it back to the campsite. Owens and the boys track Jock and JR down, and Owens gives us the villainous origin story. You tried to get me to sell. When I wouldn't, you spread some money around. Suddenly nobody would buy my crops. That ruined Owens, and he had to start all over again. Jock apologizes for the foolish and cruel things he did as a young man, and says he's used these 30 years to grow as a human being. Oh wait, no, none of that happens. Instead, he tells Owens to shoot him and get it over with. All right, Owens. Come on. If you're gonna do it, do it. Bobby and Ray come back and get the drop on the Owens boys. They threaten to turn them over to the state police. And now Jock sort of apologizes to Owens and sort of offers to make it right. I ran roughshod over a lot of people. I don't remember you, Owens. I should have. Because you got a lot of pride when you get right down to it. That's all a man can take to his grave. Everyone agrees to go their separate ways. The Wings arrive back at South Fork where Jock reminds JR to set up that trust. And Jock is going to see to it personally that it's done right. Just as soon as he's recovered from the gut shot. And we end with JR and a dilly of a pickle. The Dove Hunt is another episode penned by DC Fontana. This time with brother Richard getting the writing credit as well. The Fontanas are most famous for working in science fiction, and this episode feels a bit like a Star Trek script that was turned into a Dallas script with some alien finding Kirk on an away mission and trying to get revenge for some pre-Starfleet slight. Come to think of it, Fontana's previous script, Survival, felt that way too. I guess you can get a lot of mileage out of separating members from the main cast and putting them in harrowing situations that reveal their true colors. The events of the actual Dove Hunt are inconsequential. Tom Owens has never been brought up before, and he won't be heard from again. Even the gunshots seem to be forgotten by the next episode. Jock's half-promise to set things right only seemed to cover his first wife, not anyone else that he might have screwed over. The important part of this is that it sets in motion a mousetrap that JR has to get out of, and tosses a wrench in Jock and Miss Ellie's marriage once the test results come back. Obviously, the motif they're setting up here, one that will come back to haunt Jock by the end of the season, is Jock's chickens coming home to roost. Digger Barnes has received a bit of revision and a new actor, and that's going to be important later on. The writers already hinted at divisions between Cliff and Digger about what they feel they're owed from the Ewings. When I'm through with Ewing oil, they're going to be wiped out. Flat broke. I never wanted that. And we see that play out here with Owens deciding that this skin game has taken too much out of him. The episode itself is solid if unspectacular. There's nothing overtly wrong with it, but I think my lack of enthusiasm for it comes from the way that the end just sort of peters out. Owens catches Jock dead to rights gives him a pretty salient explanation as to why he's so angry, and then just decides he's not a killer. If this was one of Fontana's Star Trek scripts, you can bet there would have been a lot better speech at the end on the corrosive effects of seeking revenge. Other than that, the episode feels like a speed bump. Kristen, who featured so heavily in the last episode, is relegated to the background here. Suellen is barely present. Even Pamela forgets about the neurofibromatosis for a second. We do start a health scare storyline with Miss Ellie, though, and that's something and the formation of the trust would become a fly in JR's ointment. Enjoy this as a one-off for its competent setup and flow, but things are about to get hairy. 